what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we back with the ultimate bucket list and we got a special one uh one of my favorite countries i like to check out we got copenhagen uh we're here with the travel guide from the ultimate bucket list uh i subscribe so y'all make sure y'all subscribe to this channel as well uh, i did his video about sweden and it was nice it was nice so uh definitely show him love check out his video as well but uh we get the complete tour in denmark copenhagen so let's check it out see what it's about this is your complete guide to the city of copenhagen how to get around the place what attractions to see copenhagen. the best places to eat what to avoid where to buy some weed <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing <laughs> oh. advice on how to steal the danish crown jewels no, and damn. how to have the most amazing time in one of Europe's most cultured cities. Copenhagen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Danish capital city of Copenhagen. It's also the current capital of culture, full of royal history, Real nice. amazing architecture, unique experiences, friendly people, and everything else you'd expect from the Kingdom of Denmark. But before I show you around the place, let's what take a look at the map. Copenhagen is indeed a very big city, but most of the attractions you'll be interested in is right here in the center island. The so center let's start by showing you how to get here from the airport. Hey, I heard it easy, Jay. Copenhagen is incredibly well connected, and you can get here with a combination of trams, trains, buses, and the metro system. You can buy a ticket from any DSB ticket machine at any okay. station, tap in before you board, and tap out when you arrive at your final destination. Mm. I'll leave more detailed instructions. That's why I like the bucket list, because he this is actually very informative on really how to travel through these certain countries. Towards the arrive at your final well, I learned with Sweden. I'm going to have to go back to that video, too, I'll when I go. I'll leave more detailed instructions towards the end of the video, but in all honesty, it's not too dissimilar to any other place in Europe. How much was that? Now that you've arrived, let's visit the most famous attraction that Copenhagen is famous for. The Little Mermaid, the definitely gotta go the see that. Mermaid. This is to commemorate Hans Christian Andersen's masterpiece that most people now know as a Disney film. And the statue itself, it's very lovely, but it's definitely a lot smaller than you think. Here are some small children for scale. Mm. It'll take you all of about 30 seconds to see this and take a few photos before <laughs> you've um, you've basically done it. Yeah. It won't take you very long at all. <laughs> but what might take you a little bit more time is the attraction right next to it. This Castellet? is the Castellet. Castellet. It's a star-shaped military fortress that's more like a public park. Oh, now. I think I've seen this. And when you're here, be sure Whoa. to explore everything there is to offer especially if it's a nice evening like it is right now. You'll see plenty of cool things. Uh -huh. These historic cannons, for example. The giant hills surrounded by the big giant moats. Look at that landscape. This right? lovely picturesque church that's by the side of a lake. You even get to see this cool looking windmill, windmill, even though we're not in the Netherlands. <laughs> and obviously the military fort slash garrison that slap bang in the middle of it all. Wow. If it's a nice day like it is right now, it's definitely worth exploring. It's pretty cool to wander around. And it's and free. It's free. <laughs> but look. another famous attraction that's also free. He was thinking the same thing I was thinking. I'm like, and most of all, it's free. Cool to wander around. Get and a it's good free. Visual. But another famous attraction that's also free to go inside happens to be literally down the street. This Marmer. is the Marmokirken. Marmokirken. AKA Marmokirken. the Marble Church. Okay, I see that all the time. This completely circular church made of white marble is stunning to look wow. at from the outside and when you go inside you'll find that it's hauntingly beautiful Ooh. in a sort of churchy kind of way it's actually very hard to describe you wow. really have to be here to kind of see what i mean the atmosphere is calmingly quiet almost to the point where it's eerie that is huge but as it's free it's definitely worth a few minutes of your time to explore Denmark, wow. like my home country of the United Kingdom, has a royal family. And like London, Copenhagen has three Denmark royal name. palaces. 
The first of which is I don't even know. I think I somebody sent me the video. I think I'm gonna have to check the playlist, but I should. I haven't seen the Danish royal family. I don't believe the stones throw like away I have from it. the Mama Kirken. This is Amalian Borg Palace. This is oh, the Danish equivalent to Buckingham Palace, Palace Borg, and Borg, is the Borg. official residence of Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Margrethe II. Mm. At the time of recording, she is the only remaining female sovereign in the world. Oh wow! R.I.P. Mom, we miss you dearly. And like Buckingham Palace, you can go inside, but the days and times are limited. If you do mm. manage to get a ticket to Amalian Borg Palace, you'll get to see quite a lot of cool stuff. Dang. Especially the rooms of former kings. I wonder how old that stuff all is been in there. Left completely intact as the king would have left it. You'll get to see where the queen generally receives guests and oh, hello there. And the highlights <laughs> of a trip to Amelienborg Palace include the Fabergé chamber, which houses the queen's collection of Fabergé jewelry, her crown, Dang. and other trinkets made by Fabergé. You'll get to see things like the library, Very expensive, the ballroom, the dining area. There's quite a lot to see. Oh, nice. And I'm not going to go into too much detail right now because I'll be making a separate video all about Amelian Borg Palace, including how to see the changing of the guard ceremony, which happens at 12 o'clock most days. It's very okay. similar to the one in London, but there's a few other things that you'll need to know about. Check out my future video right here. Hmm. One of the other royal palaces literally happens to be a few streets away. Rosenborg. This is Rosenborg Castle. It's the Danish equivalent to the Tower of London, mm. a traditional royal residence that is now home to the Danish crown jewels. Get that. Outside Rosenborg Castle, you'll find the Kongens Hav, which is the King's Square. It's a Kongens lovely park Hav. space, and it has these amazing views of the castle itself. It's also right oh, next to its guard. military base. So the guards that you've just seen guarding Amalienborg Palace well, they all live right here. Dang. And as this is a royal palace, it's heavily guarded by these guys. So I was about to say, <laughs> I was looking at the other guards, but so they stay there. This, well, they all. Live. So they stay here. That's interesting. I wonder how old they are. Live right here. They have families. And as stuff. this is a royal palace, it's heavily guarded by these guys. The military. So though. watch your behavior whilst you're here. And when you go mm. inside, you can see where the former kings of the country oh, wow. used to live and work. Some of the rooms they've encased in glass to preserve it exactly how they left it. The hey. decor is definitely a lot older. Look at and that up there. A lot more. Look at the architecture. And the stuff. decor is definitely. Look at that. At look at the ceiling. The ceiling is different. Wow. Definitely a lot older. And there's definitely a lot more antiques here in Rosenborg than there was at Amelienborg Palace. The highlights of a trip to Rosenborg Castle include Not the, the actual throne of Denmark. There's the lots throne. of royal collectibles, such as guns and jewelry and the like. But the best bits happen to be on the basement level, as this is the place where they store the Danish crown jewels. Dang, look like at the that. UK, they also have crowns, orbs, scepters, jeweled swords, and everything you'd expect a if you were a king of a sovereign country. But no trying wow. to steal anything, guys. This is heavily guarded, and the guards here have guns. So if you do want your <laughs> own course. Danish crown jewels, you're just going to have to buy some replicas here at the gift shop. Oh, they let you buy replicas. Seriously, guys, no <laughs> trying to nick anything. These guys wow. will literally shoot on sight. Copenhagen Dang. has a plethora of museums. I mean, they kind of have no choice. You know, that's their job is to guard it, protect. Some of which are modern, some of which are kind of kooky. That's the tallest man in the world. Most of you? the traditional ones reside right here, just hmm. north of Rosenborg Castle. The most popular of which is the Staten's Museum, Museum for Kunst. Kunst. Now, I'm not the biggest art fan in the world, but this was definitely worth hmm. the money. There's various famous paintings. Right, I think I've seen that painting before. Fun in the world, but this one. That one back there, I think I've seen this one before. I mean, not the real thing, real thing, but I've seen it it's somewhere. Definitely worth the money. There's various famous paintings Different that art. you'll probably recognize right here on this. Was that Jesus? Some of the art is very, very nice. Some of the art is incredibly weird. Is is that coming out of his butt? 
Oh, whoa. If you are an arts lover, whoa, you'll be very happy. What was the inspiration behind that? That is interesting. And if you can't go back to that one, but yeah, if y'all do, y'all go. I couldn't go back to that one, but if y'all want to go back, let me know. Like that was, what was the inspiration behind that Please one? Find a sticker outside with today's date on it. Stick it to yourself and walk in and pretend that you've paid. I paid for oh, my sticker, wow. of course. <laughs> but if you're on a tight budget, that is an option. Now, at this point of the video, I mean, you know, sharing is caring. Somebody looking out for one another. You're probably getting. Quite but I will hungry. buy mine though. You'll be glad to know that Copenhagen is a foodie paradise. Roast spice. However, I will pre-warn you now that the food prices here in Denmark are horrendously expensive. Fish and it's actually chips. one of the things that Copenhagen and is sausage. known for. That said, there's three must-have food items mm. that you absolutely have to try before that you leave this good. place. The first of which is smørbrød. These Smurbrød. are Danish half sandwiches where they oh, top a slice of, that. of Danish bread with some of the freshest combinations of ingredients known to man. It looks more mm. like art than it does food. And the best place to try this is around the corner from the Statens Museum for Kunst. This is world famous omens. omens. Yes, the double A is pronounced as an O in the Danish language, just so you know. But that's my first time seeing a double A like when that. When you go inside, you'll find that the smørbrød that they sell here is definitely Michelin star quality. Not Michelin, <laughs> and the even Michelin though man. you can find this everywhere in the city, Omens definitely does it best. The food was amazing, and the service, especially from this guy, was superb. If you find okay. that this is crowded and you can't get in, they also have another location in the middle of the city. I'll warn uh. you, it's not cheap, but it's totally worth it. <laughs> if you it after like an a little meal. Sweeter, walk down the street and you'll find St. Peter's Bakery. Saint this Peter's is the oldest bakery. bakery in all of Copenhagen, serving sugary goodness since 1652. Ah. Dang. They are the original purveyors of what we now call Danish pastries. And usually when you that get one here, good with the, the queue is literally out the door. But if you're patient enough to wait, the food is definitely worth it. The Danish pastries they serve here mm, are really far good. superior to anything that you've ever had in your not life. The croissants. And I absolutely guarantee that. <laughs> please, please don't leave Copenhagen without at least trying something from here. Got to. The third must try food item too. is something called the pulsa. A Danish this hot dog? This is a traditional Danish red hot dog, topped with two kinds mm. of mustard, mayonnaise, pickles, and two kinds of onions. The best ah. place to get these is Peter's near the Rundertown, but I'll mention more about that later in the video. I look pretty good. But let's good. say well, you're lazy knows. and you don't want to traverse the city just to eat. Surely there's a place <laughs> where you can have all of this stuff at once. Well, believe it or not, yes, there is, and it's right here next to Norraport Station, Norraport. a place called Torvahallen. From the outside, it looks like a basic market, but look a bit closer and you'll mm. realize that this is foodie heaven. You can try absolutely everything here from pastries and oh, bread wow. to French macaron. I feel like I've seen this area before or it might have, might have been another another city. But yeah, there's, they got everything here in this market. You can try absolutely everything here from pastries mm. and bread to French macarons, fresh macarons. fruits, gelato, confectionery, fancy wines, mm. smelly cheeses, Fresh vegetables, smørbrød as far as the eye can see, cooked meats, fresh seafood, basically anything that you want to stick in your mouth, you can literally buy <laughs> it here. said basically anything you want to wet. Now that you're stuffed full of That's food, wild. it's now time to burn <laughs> some of that off. And down the street from the Torva Harlan, you'll find this, the Runde Tarn. Runde Known Tarn. as the Round Tower in English, this was traditionally built as an observation tower wow. and observatory. First time seeing that. It's obviously very round, hence the name. And when you go inside, you'll notice that the walkway is a giant corkscrew what? that goes all the way up and around right to the top. Wow. This was built this way so that the king could ride his horse all the way to the top of the tower. There's some interesting... Now, that is... That is some very interesting history right there. Huh. I, I was thinking it probably had like a roundabout of stairs. That's what I was thinking too. But just having a trailway, the just ride his horse all the way to the top of the tower. There's <laughs> some interesting exhibits, yes, 
but the main highlight is the observation deck right at the top, where you get mm. these amazing views nice over the view, city nice of Copenhagen. View. It's also home to one of the oldest observatories in the world. If you don't want to pay to go all the way up a tower, you can visit the church that's bolted onto the round tower absolutely mm. free. It's possibly one of the whitest I'll churches that it. you'll ever step foot in. Quite nice though. It's at this point you'll realize that you're surrounded by modern shops and modern amenities. You'll come across this small town square. This is where you'll town find square. Peter's hot dog stand, the best place to try Danish pulsa. These were so nice, I actually ate five of them on my entire Yeah, trip. dang. And I'm not even sorry. Oh, I, th <laughs> I thought he was going to say he ate five of them just right there. Once you've had your fill of hot dogs, oh, this will be good. lead you to one of the longest shopping streets in all of Europe. Burger King. This is Struggett. And this will take you a while to walk all the way down. I, I the that. shops here are probably no Gucci? different to what you're used Gucci? to back at home. A mixture of high-end boutiques and familiar high street brands. If Not you're the into shopping, too. this is definitely the place to go. Hmm. Once you reach the end of Struggett, you'll come across the largest square in the city. This is Kongens du Torv. Kongens du Torv means the king's new square in English, and there's a statue of said king hmm. right here in the middle. This is considered to be the center point of all of Copenhagen, as this is where all the nice. metro lines cross over. So if you're staying anywhere around here, getting around the city is quick and easy. Look at that. Attached to Kongens new Torv lies the most photographed area of the city. Oh yeah, very this is popular. the area of Newhaven, AKA Newhaven. the That's New Harbor. So New Haven, that's what it's called. I feel like I might have heard that before. I probably just forgot it. Well, definitely a very popular area that I like to see. That's how I know if I'm watching a video or see something. That's how I know I'm in Denmark because I see this. This is the area New, of New, New Haven, Haven, AKA Haven. the New Harbor. As the name implies, it's a harbor district, but it has these very colorful houses that makes for some excellent photos and videos. It's here that you can take a boat tour around the city of Copenhagen. Nice. But most people come to Newhaven for the lovely eateries, the amazing views, mm. and the nice atmosphere, especially on a nice day like today. It's nice to just kick back, relax, have a drink, people watch a little bit, all in this lovely <laughs> surrounding watch. area. And at night, this becomes the heartbeat of the city. Okay, that's nice. It's beautifully lit up at night, and it's definitely party central. So <laughs> if you're after a lovely meal, or if you want to party the night away, Newhaven is definitely the place to come. Get a ticket to Newhaven. As you walk south of that, you'll find other churches, other colorful buildings, and lots of cultured cityscapes. But there's a giant behemoth of a building that eclipses all the others. This is the third of three like... royal palaces. Oh, I think I've seen this one too. Even though it's owned by the royal family, it's used more by the Danish government as their pretty headquarters. Big. But the royal family still uses it for official functions oh, and receiving oh. other heads of state from different countries. Inside, it's pretty amazing, wow. especially the queen's staircase, the throne room. The most impressive, throne in my room. opinion, is the velvet room. All the walls that are is nice. in velvet, emblazed with the Danish royal seal. That is real nice. The great hall, the dining hall. There is a lot to see the here at Christiansborg Palace. Look at those chandeliers. Far too much to mention in this video, so I've made a separate video right here, telling you all about what to expect from this third royal palace. Man, so this is the third one? Those chandeliers, this is not, I really like the velvet room. That is cool. If we keep going down the map, you'll come across various museums. The King's Museum, the Museum of Copenhagen, the Carlsberg Museum, founded by that Carlsberg, but it's got nothing to do with beer. Carlsberg. <laughs> but I managed to visit the Danish Architecture Center. It's very interesting to learn all about why Danish architecture is some of the best in the world. It has a lovely rooftop terrace where you can view the entire city of Copenhagen mm. from. And when you're done, you can slide down the entire building what? so that you can get <laughs> to the exit. I, as a petulant man-child, enjoyed this very, very Dang. much. Dang. That looked like a long a ways away, down. You'll find the Radhus, aka the, the Red House, 
which is technically the city hall of Copenhagen. The Red House. And it's across the street from this that you'll come across one of the most famous attractions oh, nice. that Copenhagen is famous for. I got a carnival out Tivoli there. Gardens. Tivoli Garden. One of the oldest theme parks in the world and the inspiration for Walt Disney's Disney World. Wow. It's part botanical garden, parts restaurants and eateries, and parts fairground rides. In my opinion, this place okay. is massively overrated. Oh, not only <laughs> you do you have to pay to go in, but you also have to pay for the ride separately. Which kind of defeats the whole object of a theme park, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, if you've got. I, mean, I think that's that's typical. Like, I mean, he did say it, like fair type, just like fair type of rides. But theme park, thinking of like here we have Six Flags. Usually, you pay to get in. Uh, of course, the rides are free. They're just two hours worth of you just waiting for two hours most of the time, depending on how packed it is. But like a fair, usually you pay to get in, pay for tickets to get a ride. So that's what this seems this seem like more of a fair object type of. of a theme park, if you ask me. I mean, if you've got kids and a bunch of friends oh. and you kind of want to do stuff together, it's still pretty might as cool. well. It's still worth checking out. But if you're a single traveler like me, and if you go on a day where it's really quiet, it's really not that fun at <laughs> all. And certainly not worth the price of admission. Especially when quite a lot of the park isn't open oh, anyway. Yeah. And the overall fakeness generally happen. kind of grates on you. Take this for example. Chinatown. Not which Chinatown. serves that authentic Chinese dish, churros. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. <laughs> but like I said, if you have a bunch of friends and you're into that sort of thing, oh, it snap. probably is worth the price of admission, so long as you pay for a rides bracelet, which is separate from the entry price. Yeah, some interesting rides, though. Annoyingly. The attractions I've mentioned so far in this video are the must-see and do things that you need to do whilst you're here in Copenhagen. And that should cover about three days worth of activities. But not if bad, you've got a bit more bad. time, or if you've done all of that stuff, and want more things to do, cross over the river to the east side of the city, where Whoa. you'll find this interesting church with this Boys spiral rooftop wrestling? spire that you can climb up when the weather wow. is nice. This is also where you'll find the quote-unquote nice independent nation of Christiania. Oh, I remember hearing about this. Man. It looks like quite a bit of a ghetto, and it technically is, but the residents here try and live remember. independently I remember hearing about this when I first started learning about Denmark. It's been a minute. It's been a long minute. But uh, interesting to see again, is, though. But the residents here try and live independently from the rest of Denmark. Mm. And it's here where you can openly buy cannabis. <laughs> now, even though technically they had it's a still illegal, said, Don't stop the police smoking. generally turn a blind eye here. So if you're after <laughs> some reasonably priced weed, this is the place to come. But to be warned, the residents here are particularly twitchy about anyone taking photos oh. and videos. Because they obviously don't want tourists recording them doing illegal things. So, true, no photos true. and videos whilst you're here, otherwise you'll incur the wrath <laughs> of the locals. Go don't want to that, startle and no you'll one. find the Copenhagen Opera House. The From opera? here, you get this fantastic view of Emilienborg Palace and the Marmakirken across the water. That's a nice view. And if there's a show or the opera on, it does come highly wow. recommended. Oh, first time seeing their but opera. Even if there's nothing on, be sure to climb up to the second floor coffee shop where you can enjoy a nice brew overlooking the fantastic views. Mm. East of that, I recommend that you visit this waste management plant. Oh, yeah. Why are you telling me to go to <laughs> a waste management plant? You can go skiing. Well, the reason why is because they've built this on top of it. This is Copenhill. The artificial ski slope right here in Copenhagen. It's completely free to visit. You could technically climb the hill, but I decided to take the lift instead. Yeah, I definitely would have did this that. nice view of the <laughs> management plant from the inside. Oh. Before getting to the top and admiring these stunning oh, they got a cafe and over everything. the top of Copenhagen from here. And that chimney definitely looks menacing. <laughs> it's pretty surreal to find a goddamn ski slope slap bang on top of this building right even though i'm a skier i didn't really want to ski on this <laughs> particular slope just in case i skied off the side of the building and fell to my death See, i don't yeah i but don't know hey, how to ski maybe i'll be brave enough to do 
yeah i don't know how to ski i don't even know know nothing about skiing at all let alone knowing how to stop Ski on those skis the if i was going too fast my death but hey maybe i'll be brave enough to do that one day one day one day <laughs> if you go to the opposite end of the city you'll find the meatpacking district meat yes it district. is a real meatpacking district but it also happens to have some of the nichest eateries in the entire city mm. and it's very popular with the locals can't believe it's an actual meat packing district. Wow, very packed out Keep there. going west and you'll eventually come across Frederick's Borg Palace. You can't actually go inside, but the building Palace. itself is very lovely. And it's set in some very lovely park space. Look at those trees. On the grounds of trees Borg, all. you'll find Copenhagen Zoo. A zoo? To be honest, it's probably no different to any other zoo that you'll probably come across oh, in yeah. any other major <laughs> city. The zoo is the zoo. It's also around here where you'll find the famous Carlsberg Brewery. Carlsberg. This was where Carlsberg was traditionally brewed, and ordinarily you'd be able to take a tour of the place, visit the museum, and go for beer tasting sessions. Mm. But trust my luck to find out that when I arrived, wow. the place was completely closed for renovations, and will reopen several months after I've left Copenhagen. A lot of travel guides will tell you to visit Cistern. It's an underground art installation located in the city's underground reservoir. In my opinion, it was what? massively disappointing, and it wasn't anywhere near as exciting. So you had to walk through the water. It looked like water in on the opinion, ground. <laughs> it was massively disappointing, and it wasn't anywhere near as exciting as Richard Iowardi makes out. Travel man, <laughs> I'll be getting my money back from you. <laughs> if you're into sports, venture okay, to the north the side sports. of the city. Where you'll find this place. Oh, Parken. Parken. This is the home stadium of the Danish national football team nice. and Danish giants FC Copenhagen. FC Copenhagen. The match atmosphere have to check them out. is very very good. If you manage to score tickets to a football game, it definitely comes highly. That would be nice. Finally, guys, if you're willing to venture outside of the city of Copenhagen, be sure to visit Frederiksborg Castle. This looks like something I out of was fairy. A wasn't there just a Frederick Bird castle? Or was that something else? Copenhagen Zoo. Oh, palace. So there's the castle be sure and to palace. Believe, guys, okay. If you're willing to venture outside of the city of Copenhagen, be sure to visit Frederick's castle. I was like, castle. I could have sworn he this said like that already. Out of a fairy tale. And it's definitely worth Dang. the trip if you have the time. That is nice. Overall, guys, you definitely won't be disappointed if At you take all. a trip here to Copenhagen. Obviously, plenty to do. It's plenty definitely worth to visiting do. once in your life, and you'll need anywhere from three to seven days to experience everything. Yeah, probably Just more than sure that, really. Money. Lots of it.
good. Uh, definitely enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, Copenhagen is definitely on my bucket list. On my bucket list of places to travel to and stuff. But this was nice. Let you know there's a lot to do out here in the world. Not only that, I like the fact that he show us pretty much step by step if you're trying to travel how you know what airport to fly into what transportation would be you know budget friendly or a better option type even hotels and stuff and just showing where just showing where you can go what you can do with these things in these different countries you know but that's pretty cool Ooh, and seeing some food want to check out some street food and uh Copenhagen, I might do that one next, might do that one next, but this was good, I liked this, I enjoyed it, make sure y'all give this video thumbs up, make sure y'all go to the ultimate bucket, bucket list and, you know, like his video and uh, leave a comment on there as well, but this was good, this was really good and very informative, very informative to prepare you for your trips, like I said, uh, gonna go back to these videos when it's my time especially because yeah these this was just seven months ago i don't know so you know sometimes things change but this was just seven months ago so still kind of you know a good time and when i you go back and look at these things but i enjoy this shout out to denmark that's all i have y'all hit that subscribe button send out those recommendations and y'all be blessed be the best to be you i'm out